what I actually think is that Victarvi leads people and other similar medications lead people to feel normal. Mm -hmm. But the normal in today's America, particularly during a pandemic, is to sit on your sofa and eat bonbons and watch Netflix, exactly. right? So everybody's gaining weight. Right. What's going on everyone? So I'm here for my once every six month doctor's visit. And um, yeah, as I always do, I like to show the course of the visit so that you get a feel for what it's like to go to see an HIV doctor and the kinds of questions they ask and the kinds of routine things we do, hopefully to kind of demystify the whole experience and take some of that fear and like worry about what that's like away. All right, here we go. How are you today? <laughs> You're just here for HIV follow-up, right? Uh, what was your name? Matt, or Dr. McFarland, doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about today other than HIV follow-up? Anything concerning you? And you're still taking the Victarvi? I am. Any issues with the Victarvi? No issues. I like to blame my weight gain on it, but I think it's just my lifestyle <laughs> change more than anything. I'm probably going to blame the pandemic and that gyms aren't open. For and sure. Life is not, yeah. not that great and it's hard to motivate to work out. The studies on, you know, uh, integrase inhibitors and weight gain aren't the greatest, so I'm inclined yeah. not to, to trust those. And it's just so easy to kind of blame it on that in it general, is. I find. <clears throat> and Victarvi is about the easiest, best medication yeah. that we have, so I hate, I hate to change that. But it's something we can keep an eye on for sure. Um, and your other markers, like your Marker for diabetes looked fantastic last time, which would be something to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, we'll check that about every year unless something changes. Yeah. And your cholesterol was a little bit elevated. Mm -hmm. um, it was 210 for total, and your bad was 130. By no means anywhere where we would need to, to, to treat it with medications, but something to keep an eye on with your weight gain and making sure you're staying active, staying yeah. healthy. And we'll keep an eye on that about every six months. Yeah. I usually am like getting ready for a competition for men's physique, bodybuilding, natural. And so like the last one I did was uh, October, 2019. And I think I weighed like 160 pounds when I did that. And then March came 2020 and now I'm pushing 200. Is that, it looks like mostly muscle, but it'd be but, uh, like not been trying to gain muscle. No, so, I haven't. Yeah. It's, it's fat. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it though. I'm glad. <laughs> Do you use any other like supplements, like workout supplements or testosterone? I haven't really been lately that much since I haven't been working out. But I just got a bench. So basically, I I'll take whey protein, um, creatine, glucosamine. I'll take vitamin D pre workout, post workout. Okay. BCAAs. All natural. Okay. Yeah. And do you ever do testosterone? No. Never done it. Okay. Excellent. And just to run through your other med list to make sure that we're up to date. Um, so you still take the Adderall? Mm -hmm. And you take the 10 milligrams every day? No, it's just as needed. As needed, okay. For that and the Alprazolam. And the Alprazolam, okay. Yeah. And then are you still taking Meclizine? Meclizine. Like Antiver helps with like vertigo and dizziness and no, nausea. No, I, I only had vertigo for a few weeks and I was taking it. Okay, great. Yeah. Just take that off. And then you're still using finasteride for mm -hmm. hair? Okay. Yeah. And then are you still using the inhaler as well, the memetazone? Uh, no. No. That was a, um, a sinus or a nose. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So you're done with that? Yeah, I just took over the counter as Zyrtec. Okay. And then your last CD4 count looked great. It was in double check, it was 500. Yeah, 550s, um, the viral load was still undetectable. Everything is still going going well. Yeah. The blood pressure looks great today. Um, cool. The, and then with everything going on, are you still sexually active? Yeah. Yeah. I have a boyfriend, so. Okay. Any concern for STIs today? Mm -mm. No, no like sore throat, pain with swallowing, mm -mm. pain with pee, peeing. No. Discharge or your penis or anal pain or discharge. No weird no. symptoms. Okay. Yeah. If you want, we can go ahead and skip testing today. We'll just check the the syphilis titer, just to have okay. that as baseline, because yeah. um, you've had it in the past. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we can skip the other testing if you're sure. into that. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then, did you get the flu shot this year? I did. 
Thank you for doing that. Yep. When did you get it? Do you remember? That's January now. Like November, October? Yeah. November, December probably. Okay. And then do you remember the last time you had a meningitis vaccine? I don't. Have you been seeing Jay for long enough? It's been at his old clinic, do you know? Uh, I think it was, well, it was when they were upstairs. When they were upstairs? Okay. Yeah. Let me just see if there's some immunization records I can pull over from the last chart. Because if not, you would be due for um, a, an, an additional pneumonia vaccine, the Pneumavax, you have Prevnar. They cover a little bit of the different strains of the pneumonia um, okay. bacteria. And then uh, a meningitis, again. Just you need that every five years. Gotcha. Does that, does that get recorded on the Helio app? It does. Um, and whatever's on the Helio app would also be in our system, and I don't see a meningitis recorded. Probably because you've had it recently enough. Um, I think it's Helio. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never heard it say that loud, so I'm kind of awkward. Uh, I'm not known for pronouncing things well. My okay. friends always make fun of me for it, so I'm sure I'm saying the, the app wrong. <laughs> How do you spell your last name? D-E-R-R-A-Z-I. -R -R yeah. And what's your birthday? May 8th, 1985. I'm just gonna throw in when you had your last tetanus so we don't bother you with that. When was that? 2015. And then we should give you, you had the other pneumonia, so you do be due for Pneumavax today. Oh. And then we also should give you um, the Menactra or the meningitis vaccine too. Fun. <laughs> not, probably not the vaccines you were hoping for today. <laughs> no, I want the other one. Do you know if they're gonna be doing vaccines through this clinic? So right now, everything is being controlled by LA County Department of Public Health. Gotcha. So for a while we had some of the Moderna vaccine oh. for healthcare workers in the building and around here, because um, we have the freezer capabilities, but um, everything was being done through the county. So you still had to sign up through the county to then get it here. So that's still the case right now. Unfortunately, it seems like now that there's, now that we're opening who can get the vaccine, supply is becoming more of an issue. So I heard today that yeah. some of the vaccine sites in LA County are shutting down temporarily because we just don't have the supply. Um, okay. And thankfully, HIV does not seem to predispose you to getting it or worse outcomes. So it doesn't bump you up in, in the list, but it's good for if you get exposed to it. I'm assuming if you have like a really low CD4, then that's a slightly different story. Potentially. Um, we just definitely for well controlled like you are. It's not a worry or a risk. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about today? I don't think so. Right. Let's get feel for some more. Talk to me nice. Talk to me honestly. Look in my eyes. Don't let it fall on me. Say you a good guy. Make me So let me go talk, talk with Jay and then we'll we'll come back shortly. Um, otherwise We'll just grab grab some labs today, grab some urine, and then we'll give you the two vaccines. You okay. should be good to go. Cool. Hello. Hey. Well, good morning. Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Okay. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. You look great. Thank you. I'm. I'm. I weigh. I'm, I'm pushing 200 now. Get out. I didn't look at your weight. Yeah. How did you do that? Well. <laughs> Um, I mean, Crunch has cl been closed for a year, and right. I was working full-time bartending on my feet six, seven, eight right. hours a day, and now I'm sedentary most of the day. Mm -hmm. So I just got a Peloton, and I got a bench, Bike. and some weights. Yeah, so what have you been doing to exercise? I tried to run for a while, and then I got shin splints. I tried to do just various things, and, and now I'm working like 60, 70 hours a week. So what are you doing for work? I kind of struggle a lot of things. I'm working for my parents' manufacturing plant. They mm -hmm. manufacture um, polyethylene plastic bags, tubing, sheeting mm -hmm. in Orange County, so I'm commuting. Mm -hmm. um, and that's 40 hours a week. I'm assisting Miss Peppermint. She's a trans drag queen. She was on RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. And we've become friends, so now we're also co producing some things together. And Fantastic. You know, working on that and getting that cash flow coming in. And then I'm also working with Carl Schmidt on Plus Life. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have an ongoing relationship there, and then I'm doing my own social media stuff as well. Terrific! Excellent! Keeps me busy. Tell me more about Plus Life. 
Oh, um, yeah. So that's, it was originally just an internet-based platform with videos talking about HIV and then just like living your best life in general. So it appeals to everyone, mm -hmm. but we kind of like sneaked that in. Mm -hmm. And then Localish picked it up for their new digital cable channel. So now we have like a 30 minute show that airs once a week. And then on that, I'll do like a five minute fitness segment and I'll talk to other fitness gurus and share their Excellent. modality is. Excellent. Yeah. So when you said you're pushing 200, is that, that's 200 pounds of muscle or 200 pounds of other stuff? Okay. That's 200 pounds Everything of being else. sedentary. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. And I did, it wasn't until like maybe two weeks ago that I finally got a, a weight bench mm -hmm. and some hundred pound dumbbells and the yeah, bike. Weight, weight benches are not very expensive. No, it's not bad. We got um, one couple. Oh, the know. bike was expensive. It just takes up space is the only thing. Yeah. Um, Ours folds up, although we leave it. Yeah, so I leave mine propped up on the wall. And I got a Peloton too. About, so with that uh, and the just bike. Just over a month ago. You know, if, if, if I get a routine going, then I should be fine. Yeah. That's when did you get the Peloton? I got it in December. And have you been using it? I have. I started, but not consistently. Okay. So you're not, you're not hooked on it yet. It's just me. I gotta figure out how to manage my time better. From Monday through Thursday, I slept eight hours because I was just working. Oh, got it. So not eight hours a night, but eight hours total. Yeah, that's not healthy. No. So I'm trying to figure everything out. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens to, um, like what we choose to do when the gyms open back up again. Yeah. Because now I've got all this stuff at home. Exactly. I got exactly. What do you call it? A t uh, power tower, oh. which is also pretty interesting. So you can do like pull ups and stuff like that? Yeah. And you can do some other stuff. You can do like, um, you know, the little things when you. Oh, uh, yeah. This thing. And then you can do these things dips. Dips. That's great. Um, you can use it for cable y stuff, but I haven't really done that yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it's like, really. That saves me 30, 45 minutes going exactly. to and from, and why not? And I'm yeah. working from home anyway. I really like having that stuff at home. Me too. You know, you don't have obviously as much, yeah. But it saves the time, and uh -huh. I've been using it. I'm I'm on the Peloton every other day. Yeah, I had knee surgery a couple months ago, so I have to. I can't uh. run right now. I I will be able to run again, but not yet. Did you have an, like a an injury or just? I had um, a chronic injury that finally needed some yeah. attention. Okay. So I had a partial knee replacement. Wow. Makes me feel old. <laughs> Not a full knee replacement, so I'm not quite that old. But, but so uh, the bike is okay on it. Yeah. Good. So that's all good. So yeah, have fun with Peloton. Yeah. What else can we do for you, young man? Um, I would love for you to talk about the FDA approval of the long lasting. Ah, I'd love to. So last week, mm, yeah. the FDA approved a medication with the brand name Cabinuva, and the uh, generic name is Cabotegravirupivirine Long Acting. Okay. Kind of a mouthful. It is the first in FDA approved injectable HIV medication. It is, um, so there's kind of a two trends going on in HIV therapy. But before I talk about HIV therapy, let me take a step back and talk about what we would ultimately love to do in terms of development of medication and therapies, and that is cure. Mm -hmm. So there is ongoing work on cure. Until we have a cure, um, we're just working on better and better therapies. Yeah. So you're on a really, really good therapy. You're on one pill once a day. It has, you tell me what it has for side effects. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So, and it doesn't have any measurable impact on kidney health, on bone health, on cholesterol. There's, you know, people are constantly drilling down and finding, trying to find out if there's a downside to medication, but they're having a really hard time with with Big Tarby. Yeah. And you may know what some of the um and I'm getting to your question by the way, but you may know what some of the um current kind of um controversy is around Big Tarby and similar medications as we drill down and try to find Is that the weight thing? Weight. So that's all kind of a, But I'm also kinda of like is that that's a very is that chicken or egg? Like exactly. So that's a very, a very nebulous question. Yeah. And um, what we can't tease out is, do some HIV medications cause weight loss because they make people feel nauseated? Um, 
We also can't tease out, you know, America in general is gaining weight, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> people are big. And what I actually think is that Victarvi leads people and other similar medications lead people to feel normal. Mm -hmm. But the normal in today's America, particularly during a pandemic, is to sit on your sofa and eat bonbons and watch Netflix, exactly. right? So everybody's gaining weight. Right. And I find some people on Victarvi gain weight, some people on Victarvi lose weight, get yeah. fit, feel great. Yeah. Anyway, what I'm getting at is you're on a really, really good combination. And when it comes to therapies, the current trend in research is to find things that are as good and then maybe that have some advantage, not really in safety because they're, you can't get safer than something that's com already incredibly safe. Yeah. Or um, find things that have an advantage uh, in terms of different ways of getting the same medication into people's bodies. And the two areas that are getting developed are two drug therapies instead of three. Mm -hmm. There's three active meds in Victarvi. That's okay. traditionally what we've done since we've had effective therapy is use three meds to shut the virus down. Yeah. So we're now finding that in some combinations you can use just two. Yeah. Um, and then the other area that's getting developed is long-term injectables. So this is the first long-term injectable. It happens to be a two-drug therapy. It's exciting to have a new, um, a, a new delivery system, so injections mm -hmm. instead of pills. It's not new in the sense that these are new classes of medications. These are the same medications just delivered by a different mechanism, different route. And that may be appealing to some people. There's more work going on to develop other long-term injectables. I don't think we'll have anything available for several years, so this is the first one. When it was approved last week, it was approved to be given once a month. There's also research going on right now looking at giving it once every two months, mm -hmm. same medication. It's given as a, a deep muscle injection into the gluteus, gluteus um, medius. So okay. it goes deep in here, yeah. and it's actually two injections, right. cabotegravir, real pivoting, okay. one on each side once okay. a month. Fine. There is some discomfort with the injection. Yeah. Uh, the discomfort tends to get less and less with time as people get, you know, know what to expect. Mm -hmm. and I don't remember if you've ever had a deep injection in your butt. Um, what's so like kind of Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like that, maybe not quite as bad. That's okay. what people tend to say. Okay. And um, for some people, it's appealing. They would prefer not to take pills every day, and yeah. they would rather just get a shot every month. Um, again, hopefully within the year we'll be we'll have approval to give it every two months instead of every month. Uh, it is given in the office, so it does require an office visit. Is that a logistical concern about having more and more people coming in and out yes. on a regular basis? It's a logistical concern, particularly during COVID. Um, it's also a logistical concern in the sense of so what we do now is we see you like twice a year, right? Yeah. And we draw some blood and we give you Victarvi. And then you go home and you, who's responsible for you taking the Victarvi? I am. You are. Yeah. So, you know, we see you later and, and hopefully everything is good. You're taking your Victarvi. All your labs are great. Mm -hmm. It's a little different though now that it's this injection that, that we're now somewhat responsible yeah. because what do we do if you've got an appointment to come back in a month for your injection and, and someone doesn't show up? Yeah. Then we have to chase them down and say, you totally. know, hey, you've got to get in here within a week. Otherwise, yeah. there's issues of um, having drug levels that are not ideal. Yeah. So it's exciting that we've got new um, regimens available, new modalities. It can appeal to some people. And the real hope is that um, the real goal, I think, as you know, with HIV is to get everybody to undetectable. And what's the name of the, the show that you're doing again? A Plus Life? Yeah. So you probably talk about that stuff with Plus Life, yeah. that essentially you get to undetectable, all of life is open to you in all of its fullness, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. but, but not everybody with HIV is able to get there as easily as others. Yeah. So we give you your Victarvi prescription, you take it every day, not everybody's gonna do that. Mm -hmm. So people that um, don't have a place, a, a secure place to live, totally. they find it hard to keep their meds, um, women in particular who live with HIV may not find it, they may not feel safe to have their medication in their cabinet where somebody else may see it. Mm. Um, 
or people that have you know more shame around HIV may not want to look at their meds every day. Yeah. Uh, and that can get in, in the way of people taking their meds and then getting to undetectable. And if they're not going to get into the undetectable, they're not going to have their full range of a healthy life. Uh -huh. So it's nice to have other options and it's a good sign that we're going to have other options yet in the future that maybe every three months or every six months um, they're even looking at things that are given by a little injection or a little incision with an implant once a year. Okay. So that's that's what's going on research-wise. Yeah. Did I was that a long-winded answer to your question? Great. Thank you for joining this interview. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you didn't mind uh, me talking for about a half an hour nonstop. No. Uh, okay, kiddo. Yep. Okay. Let's get you out here and get some blood out of you. Okay. Talk to me nice. Talk to me honestly. Look at my eyes. Don't let it fall on me. Say you're a good guy. Make me believe it. Don't want to hear it. I want to see it. See how. Rewind. When we rewind. We feel so nice. We time. probably see my shoes like doing this while she's getting ready to give me these shots because that's my nerves. As much as I get picked and prodded with needles, I still get nervous. Okay, I'm gonna do this urine and then that's it. We're good to go. Bye guys.